comes up in a few minutes after, you know what? It was a, it was a late night or an early morning, whichever one you want to look at it. But praise God. Help us today as we just give praise to the Lord. Through you, I can do anything. I can do all things. Because it's you who gives me strength. Nothing is impossible through you. Strongholds are broken. I am living by faith. Nothing is impossible. there. I'm Pastor Bobby of Hope Lavernia. You know, it's only through Jesus that you can truly have fulfillment in this world. 
At Hope, we believe that every person can have a restored relationship with God through accepting Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, into one's life. Isn't that exciting? God himself wants to have a relationship with you. We are passionate about sharing this fantastic news with our friends and neighbors in Lavernia and surrounding area. While we currently meet at the Lavernia Primary School on FM 1346, we have also purchased 15 acres for Hope's future church home. As our church family grows, I pray that you accept this open invitation to come and join us on Sundays at 10.30 a.m. and discover family, community, purpose, and hope for your life in Christ. As we say here at Hope, when you come, you are a friend, but when you leave, you are a part of the family. May God bless you. And I look forward to seeing you very soon at Hope Laverne. Woo Happy 20th! Hello years. there, I'm Pastor Woo. Bobby. Man, we're going to have a 20-year birthday party coming up. Who's ready? Oh, y'all aren't too tired. Y'all aren't ready. I'm glad Come on, who's ready? Like yeah. <laughs> I know y'all stayed up late. Me too. It's all right. So we're so glad that you guys decided to wake up bright and early and come and celebrate with us um, on Sunday morning, the very first day of the year. Yeah. Yes, yes. Your first fruits will be blessed. You got up. You made it. You did it. And our vision at Hope is simply to reach and equip people for successful Christian living. Yes. Yes, okay. We like to say, like Pastor Bobby said from the past, when you come in, you're a friend, but as soon as you walk through those doors, you're part of the family. So welcome to the family. If you're new to Hope today, we're so glad to have you with us. Um, make sure to stop out at the Resource Center. We've got some great items available, and if we could get some info, we, we like to keep in contact and communicate with our families, <laughs> right? <laughs> As everybody has had the holidays, we're so glad that we're able to communicate and reach out and love on each and every one of you. So uh, we are going to do a scripture reading this morning because the word of God is important. If we could all, um, let's just honor God by standing as we read. If you have your Bibles with you, whether it's digital or, or um, manual copy, go ahead and we're going to go to Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. And it says, first this. God created the heavens and the earth. All you see, all you don't see. Earth was a soup of nothingness, a bottomless emptiness, an inky blackness. And God's spirit broded like a bird above the watery abyss. And God spoke, light. And light appeared. And God saw that light was good and separated light from dark. God named the light day, and he named the dark night. It was evening, it was morning, day one. So just like we sang, nothing is impossible for God on day one, and on day one of 2023, we're here, so we're going to come together and just in a time of praise and a time of worship to give him our first fruits of worship today. So find that spot that makes you communicate with God today. Help him to be your center, be your focus. In Jesus' name. Here is where I lay it down. Every burden, every cloud. This is my surrender. This is my surrender. Here is where
Jesus' name. <laughs> oh, I love it because it's such a perfect time for us to make fresh starts. Oh, that's in the flesh, that's in the world. Make fresh starts. It's easy at this point, this break in the calendar to go, last year was last year. This is this year. I said it with Christmas. I'll say it on New Year's. I kind of wish that every year the calendar would land that it would be on a Sunday. It's a traditional, yes, I know we're singing a song, break tradition, but it's a traditional day that we come to church, gather together. But let's just break some of those in mental Come on, come on, the thought process right now. This could be the first day of the rest of the year. Oh, it is. This could be the first day of the rest of my life. It can be. You know, there's a fresh break with the Lord all the time. Jesus says, all you have to do is come to me, you who are weary, heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come to me, those who have sinned, and I will... Upon your confession, forgive you and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Come unto me, because my mercies are new every morning. Come unto me. But you got you to gotta make room. You got to make room. I'm not, into, I'm, not, I'm not here to talk about resolutions. I'm just here about talking about a commitment today. How many of you would commit with me that, Lord, I'm going to make more room for you beginning right now? He said, forget those things in the past. Come on, I'm just quoting scripture to you. Forget those things in the past. Come on. You may have made some mistakes last year and the previous. You may have fallen short according to the scripture. We all do. Mm. I didn't come with eloquent words today. I came to the truth today. That if you would put your hand in his hand, he would walk with you and he would talk with you and he would restore, he would renew, he would refresh. He will give life where there is death. He will give promise and hope where there is darkness and destitute and, and doubt and fear. He is, hallelujah, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He has changed not. He is the God of yesterday, but he is the God of today, and he will be the God of tomorrow if we would but trust him, trust him, trust him. And what a simple song I've been singing over and over since it dropped into my heart. It's a prayer. I will make room. It means I got to put some of the yesterday behind me, shake up the ground. That's where I want us to start and sing it. Hallelujah. And I'm going to make a I'm going to make an invitation right now. It could be a little chaotic and only those, only those who want God to shake some ground, do I want you to walk to the front? That means those who are just tired of that which you have just been standing on. You need God to wreck some past. You need God right now to move some ground. You need God to have, oh, you know, you, oh, hear this, the word. I just believe this is a word from the Lord. If you consider a plant, it dies when it goes in the ground. But there cannot be new life of a plant coming through the soil until the ground breaks. There has to be some breakage of the soil. There has to be some breaking of the ground. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. We had those little milk cartons in elementary in my years that we put in those dark rooms to see if that little bean would break through. But when we opened the closet, even in darkness, you could find that there was a little, there was a little plant breaking through the soil. And then we brought it to the light. I'm today asking you to let God break open some ground, let some shoots of life come through, and let the light of Jesus shine on. And let us begin growth today. Shake up the ground for my tradition. Break down the walls for my religion. Your way is better. Your way is better. God, shake up the ground for my traditions. Break down the walls for my religion. Your way is better. Shake up the ground 
Jesus, the only one who could ever say, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you.
Hallelujah. Will you join me in a very familiar prayer that so often is just recited, but I want it to be a prayer of your heart. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallelujah, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. He who has ears, let him hear. Mm. Let me break that down just a little bit. Are you listening? Hallelujah. 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 If you stand here today and you're unfamiliar with the presence of God, the Spirit of God, and the words of God, hallelujah, you've just experienced all of those. Hallelujah. He is here. Reach out and touch him. Hallelujah. As the song would say as he goes by. Reach out and touch the Lord as he goes by. You'll find he's not too weary. He 
is past, and by this moment, supply, reach out and touch the Lord as he goes by, reach out. If you need a touch from the Lord today, you need to reach out and touch him. You need to reach out and touch him. You, you'll find he's not too busy to hear your heart's cry. He's passing by this moment to means to supply. Reach out and touch the Lord. As he goes by. So reach out and touch him. I want you to come this morning if you have any need. Any need that you intend to give God glory for. As he reaches back and touches you. Hallelujah. I put that condition on you because that is the desire of his heart. That you give him all the glory. And everyone else see and experience his glory. But if you have a need, I want you to come right now, and I want you to lift both hands in the air, and I want you to say, Lord, I've made room, and I have come that you build my life. And Lord God, I am reaching out to you. Do so as you will this morning. Come right now. Lift both hands in the air and receive of him. Lord, you see across the front of this room, those who have obediently called upon you and they have faithfully, Lord Jesus, depended and endured to this day. And I pray that you release from heaven's door. Hallelujah. Receive today. Oh, glory to God. I believe today. Oh, as we sang earlier, I believe, I believe, I believe nothing is impossible for God to them who believe on his name and are called according to his purposes. Hallelujah. Do you believe today? Would you just give him thanksgiving today? Give him thanksgiving. Give him thanksgiving. Come on, give him thanksgiving. He just did a work in your life. Come on, some of you are more grateful than what you're expressing this morning. You don't realize what he has just done in your life. He has freed you from shackles today. And 2022 has kept you bound. Oh, some of you are still bound from 2020. I want you to know that 2023 is a here. And God has set us free. To do his will. Oh, hallelujah. 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 I would say to you today, oh, I believe this is what the Lord is saying. I would say to you today, hallelujah. I have come. To meet you today more than you have come to meet me today. I have an assignment that has yet to be expired that is necessary for you to pick up. And you are who I have called to carry that which I have commissioned. Do what I have called you to do and trust in me for on this day I will remind you that I will take care of all that you have need of. I will protect, I will watch, I will heal, I will direct. But you have to trust in me and walk in rhythm with my commission. Horia Kandor. Oh, God, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for your word today. Hallelujah. 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 God, you're worthy. 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 Worthy of everything. Worthy. 
worthy of it. Thomas, Father, Pablo, Kuros, the same word, worthy. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Jesus, the you name go right now, of God, every other. This is no longer about you. This is about someone else. Someone needs your Jesus, prayer right now. Jesus, the only go right one. Now. Go, move, move in this place. Sing. Go pray for somebody. Hallelujah. Worthy of every so breath we could you can't ever move your feet. Pray, turn. Turn your you. body to the person next to you. Pray. Pray for someone. For you. Pray. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Hope in up my eyes in a wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart. And Don't let our children be left alone. Go, somebody go pray for a kid today. Come on. precious children are. Amen? Come on. Somewhere around the age of the terrible twos and the teenage years of rebellion, we forget how valuable they are to the kingdom. And this is such an important day in the life. Would you have a seat this morning? Children delight God.
we only use on different and special and unique occasions the verse that says, suffer the little children, let them come unto him. And some people emphasize the word suffer, but I want you to know something. God takes great pleasure in children. The same person who wrote that previous verse and who allowed the children to come to him also said, if you lead one of them astray, you better just tie, <laughs> throw you into the river. You think the mafia was the author of that? You ever think about that? How many movies and how many legends are made over the who had a concrete block tied around them and thrown them into some forgotten lake? And God said, do that to those who lead the children astray. can't wait to share this in my sermon a little later, but I'm going to share it right now. You have such an awesome response. I'm going to do this first before y'all come up because she's in a really good place. All right. Sometimes when they get up here, 101, dedication's a baby. Anything goes when they hit the stage. But I want you to hear this. You have a responsibility, parents. I, I saw this uh, Kirk Cameron who's been under a lot of fire. I, I don't know his theological found. I just know this man is unafraid and unashamed of the gospel. It's incredible what little I've seen because the media is not going to give you everything. But one of the things he said, he said, parents, you have a responsibility to raise your child in the way they should go, and that is to guard what goes in their mind. I don't know about you, but what I just experienced in this place today is what I want my child's mind to be full of. And you cannot experience that unless you're here. So first thing on the list is show up where the presence of God is going to be. You may think that you're doing the right thing of all the things you provide for your children outside the presence of God. You are wrong. And you will lead your children astray. See, that's why I better y'all stay right there a moment because I'm talking to a lot of parents right now, even those on Facebook. And it is better that you just, you just count on it. There is a cement block with a chain with your name on it, and you're going to die. You, you, I'm telling you, your children are important to God. And we dedicate children in this house. We don't baptize them at this age because baptism is reserved for the time of accountability where they understand that they are following Christ in his example of dying and rising. Hallelujah. All you're doing is getting your children wet at this age. They don't know. And you know, this is not, this is, you know, the Lord spoke to me and said, why are we calling it a dedication? Well, because, Lord, you, we read Samuel and we read what, you know, his mama did. And oh, he said, I'll give you that. He said, but this is really a commissioning for the parents. Matthew 28 is not just for those who show up and say, okay, I'll go into the ministry. Matthew 28 starts with somebody that says, yes, I will follow Jesus. And, and those final verses, beginning in verse 18, really should be the, the, the textbook, not Dr. Spock. I don't even know the man. I haven't even read his book. But I say that you're supposed to follow some of his rules. I bet that guy never had a child. I have no idea. But I'm telling you, God said, when you say there's no manual for children, there is. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel and make disciples your first disciple on this planet earth comes from your loins you sired them they are called your children they are valuable to God and if you are not making little disciples out of them you are a sinner and you are destined to sin to experience a sinner's death and hellfire and you will be alone forever without your family unless your family and you don't even see your family if they go to hell with you because there's an isolation that you can't experience this is important folks we live in a culture where your children have so many other opportunities. This, this is the greatest day in the world. We get to dedicate. Thank you for having a baby. And this timing. Thank you. You don't know that every everything 
is done in perfect timing. I bet you God has a sketch pad saying, this is what we're going to do, and this is how we're going to start 2023. If people don't believe that God's got everything marked out, you just off your rocker. He got everything. What a glorious day this is. I love this family. We're going to introduce them, bring them up shortly. And I don't know how far we'll get into the service. This may be it. So I'll get your children to children's church and nursery. We're, we're working that direction. But there's nothing more important than your children seeing. And some of you need to rededicate your kids this morning. When we dedicate Taya to the Lord, we pray over her. I need you to pray over your children today. Some of you need to repent. Say, Lord God, I have been focusing on the wrong things. My last little illustration, I'll go into the ceremony I have here. I like to watch movies. Some of you know that. If you don't like that as your pastor, you need to find a new pastor and make sure you find out what they watch when you're not around. So I, I watch movies. I don't watch bad movies. I watch movies. I, I'm entertained by them. I enjoy it. So I went to see Avatar. And I know there's a lot of religious things. Y'all want to talk about that. But this is what I walked away from. Okay? And, and, and let me, I'm going to throw somebody under the bus this morning for all you T.D. Jakes fans. That's his number one hobby is watching movies. And he taught me something. He said, you walk out and you either smile and say, that was pretty good. I was entertained. Now back to work. Or you walk out and go, that was crummy. Flush it right out the system. All right? And he watches good movies too. So that was all my disclaimers, okay? But just what I walked away from. I sat there for three hours and 12 minutes. I only went to the potty once. And those of you that know me when you go to the movies, my wife, my <laughs> Bill and his back there going, dear God, what happened? <laughs> I drink a lot of coffee. Y'all get, get the program, right? All right? And I walked out of there, and it was not till later I talked to Lisa, and she goes, I think that's entertaining. How can I sit there for three hours? How can the place be packed and sit there for three hours, 12 minutes, and most people get, get nervous after 12 minutes of being in church? And have to go to the bathroom at least three times. I have a tracker. I know. Put, I'm not deer hunting right now. I can put my deer cams back here. I got you. All right. I want to invite Josh, Vanessa to come. Bring this wonderful, wonderful gift. Amen. Representing your household, representing every child. You're so beautiful. I'm good in my mama's hand. <laughs> and you know what? I have noticed that you have family in the house. So I'm going to invite grandmas and grandpas first because they have waited a long time. Amen. Amen. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Amen. Do you need help up, Russell? Yeah. You good? You good? All right, amen. Come on, give him another round of applause. Isn't this? <laughs> Down here, give it a little better picture. All right, we got some aunts and uncles here. You want them to join us too? I want them to. Come on, aunts and uncles. Come on, give you an opportunity. I thought, Alfonso, I didn't know you were related. That's cool. <laughs> come on. All right, come on, give this family a round of applause. Look at this Woo! handsome, <laughs> handsome family. Who's missing? Come on, girls. Come on, sisters. Ah, y'all, wait, right here in front. No, no, y'all are, y'all, y'all rank higher than that. Come on. Uh, amen. All right, who are we missing? Anybody we missing in the house? Grandma had, you got a picture on her phone? Yeah, you hold it up. Because they're going to take a photo and, and, you know, Photoshop it in there. Photoshop. Let me stand to the side. Everybody get some pictures right now. Let's get some pictures right now. Photoshop. Let me stand to the side. Everybody get some pictures right now. Pictures are good. She's sucking on the toy. We're good. The Bible says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them upon your children. Another translation says, Teach, train. One Greek, when you're looking at the, that Phrase is to create an appetite in them for the things of God. Talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. Oh, praise God. What a responsibility. 
you have three little disciples. Amen. Each one of them. You know, we say that God molds and shapes as the potter and we are the clay. Amen. He just gave you just like clay. You're a part of that. Your hands, your heart are part of that shaping and that developing and that building up of the faith of God. So I asked, will you make a commitment? And I'm going to add this. It's not in my notes as we typically do to make a commitment to the commission to make disciples of Taya as well as the entire family. If so, would you say, I will? I will. No, y'all are next. <laughs> I pick on the, the extended family more. Because all, uh, it's, you know, they're like sponges, especially this one on the end. Soak up everything. <laughs> Soak up everything that they see you do, hear you say. Those words that you don't think they ever know, they're going to know. But it's this next layer. Grandpas, grandmas, aunts, uncles, cousins, the things can be observed and heard. So you have to make the same commitment. That you're a part of the journey. You're a part of the experience. You're a part of the education of the things of God with this precious child. So will you make a commitment to the commission to make a disciple? If so, will you say, I will? I will. Now, I look out here. This is not the first layer, but this is a layer. This is one reason I'm so thankful to be a part of the family of God. We need the extension, the support, the encouragement, the building up of our faith. And there are out here some faces that are new. Some of y'all may not even know them. But they're going to make a decision today. Would they make a support and a help in the raising, training, creating an appetite? For the things of God, like she has. I mean, wouldn't we all want to be like that with that toy? I mean, that's just like, just want to eat it. Tear it up. But that's what he says. Do you hunger and thirst after the things of righteousness? Church, this is where you get an opportunity. Now, to say it means that when we need you to serve in girls' ministry or Royal Rangers or nursery or pre-K or children's church or go to camp during the summer or do some or just be available when a parent needs you with a phone call or a text anytime anywhere that's a big responsibility isn't it this is where we become unselfish and the commission starts in our own house to make disciples are you willing to make that commitment to the commission to make a disciple of this child, her sisters, and all those that they call family? If so, will you say, I will? I will. Would you stand with me? God has given you a special assignment that you keep this all going in the right direction. Not just to provide food and clothing and a roof. You turn that over to God. You do what you do faithfully and responsibly. But first and foremost, keep this family walking in the steps of righteousness. It's a big responsibility, Josh, but I know you got this. Because you got two strong men behind you. Good example. Praise God. Would you stretch your hand out towards this family? 
in particular, Kaya. In Jesus' name, we pray. Lord, a prayer of dedication, of commitment. Lord God, from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. Lord, I pray divine health, divine steps, and divine anointing upon her. Let her, Lord, be an influence on the entire family for even the smallest of things in the kingdom of God. Thank you for this family. Thank you for their commitment. Thank you for their faithfulness. Thank you, Lord God, that today is the first day of the rest of their lives. In Jesus' name. Can you say amen? Amen. Let me step away one more time. Take that picture. Come on, get those photos. Well, I, I asked if there was anybody else. Come on, come on. Come on. Everybody. That's what I meant when I said, is there anyone else? <laughs> They're hiding. Well, Shaylee's shy. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on. You right up here in the front? Amen, amen. Come on up. All right. All right, one more time. Is there anyone missing? Where's Leonard? Well, go get Leonard. Let's Photoshop him in there. Can we touch him up a little bit? We'll take a few pictures. Well, she looks like Leonard. All right, somebody sing. Leonard planned this so he could get the grand entrance, didn't he? I love it. I love it. I love it. All right, well, let me get the, let me get your gift. We always have the Word of God. We want, yeah. You know how to open those gifts? All right. Yeah, you can have that. Leonard coming? What was he at, the back part of the property? All right, everybody give him a hand when he comes in. Come on, Leonard. They, they want your picture. Amen, amen. And there you go. All right. Everybody make them smile. Put your hands together and say, thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Leah, Leah, put your hand down. All right. All right. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Thank you so much. I'm going to Praise God. Take the easy way down. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. I'm going to go ahead at this time and and uh, give Craig an opportunity to come and but I'm going to go ahead and dismiss the kids. Is that no that no Belinda said no wait come on Craig you got you got one minute brother because those children are like right, looking so at we're, like they want to we're not going to talk about Malachi and the blessings and we're not going to talk about Jesus talking to the religious people about tithing we're not going to do that. We're not going to double dog dare you. We're not going to do any of that. We're just going to remind you, you need to tithe. I, I know the audience. That's probably all I need to say. Just remember to tithe. Remember to give above and beyond to missionaries or to the seed bank. A dollar. I saw a dollar up here. Pastor. Oh, I'm sorry. I was going to use a dollar for seed faith. So it's a dollar today. It's for every day of the every Sunday. Give seed faith. That's it. Lord bless the offering. Amen. Oh, good. It gives me more time. <laughs> oh, so some quick announcements before we do dismiss the kids.
Um, first of all, tomorrow is our deadline to RSVP for the 20th anniversary. There may or may not be a, an extension on that, but tomorrow is the day. So many of you have been so good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Many of you in the room, if not maybe most of you, have already RSVP'd, and we really appreciate that. If you haven't, take your phone out. Get the little photo uh, picture thing on there. S put it towards the screen. You might need to blow it up, and then it might give a little, a little yellow link, if you have an iPhone at least. And you tap on that, and it will take you right where you need to go to RSVP for your family. I recommend one per household. Don't feel like you have to do you know, individual or anything like that. And then you can let us know if you're going to be here for part or all of uh, that weekend. So Saturday we have the 11 to 3, which is the come and go. It's going to be a great kind of family reunion style, food, fun, activities, um, fellowship with people from past and present days of Hope Church. And then, of course, we also, uh, who's going to watch these babies? I'm part of the nursery. Where are you all going? <laughs> all right. Well, I don't know. Somebody, somebody else is watching the babies, I guess, right? Because we're still in here. <laughs> <laughs> um, but and then of course that Sunday we will have a 9 a.m. and a 10 a.m. service um, with uh, former general assistant general superintendent Alton Garrison. So register, let us know that you're coming. We'd love to hear from you. And if you're not able to, and you and those of you who are on Facebook, you're not able to come. Um, don't worry. Go to the church website. Go to events, and then find on that calendar. Find either the Saturday or the Sunday, click on that, and you will find a link about where you can make a quick little video to just say, hey, sorry we can't make it, but we love y'all, and, you know, happy birthday, da 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 okay? So be sure and do that, too, because then that's a great way for you to be with us virtually, even if you can't be with us physically. Amen? All right. Also, since everything's starting back up again, Wednesday, midweek resume, so we want to see your kiddos here for girls ministries and royal rangers we want to see your teenagers here for revolve youth adults we want to see you here for our midweek discipleship so 6 30 we want to see you back in the house this wednesday night also the food pantry we have our opportunity as one of the churches in the alliance or the fellowship here in town to serve and our sunday to serve is going to be the saturday saturday to serve is going to be the saturday following our birthday so that's january 28th if you don't mind letting me know, there's a sign-up sheet in the lobby. Let me know if you'll be a part of that. That'd be wonderful, and then we can kind of keep you up to date with any, um, you know, reminders and, and things like that regarding it. All right, I am just about done. I want to read a quote to you. Um, how many of you know today's the first day of the year? Okay, I'll get you to make it sure. <laughs> All right. Um, there is, uh, in a couple of movies, a couple of Christmas movies, they have Santa Claus, and by the way, Santa, so awesome. Thank you for coming. Oh, wait, that's not Santa. Sorry. Um, my bad. Uh, whoever Santa was, it was so great for him to be here last Saturday, last Sunday. Anyway, in these Christmas movies, uh, there's a couple of times where they say, Santa says, we have finished making all the presents for the year. And everybody's like, whoa. And then he says, and now it's time to get ready for next year. And all of the, you know, elves and stuff are up. Whoa clap and are all excited instead of being like oh what again so I feel that way when I come to the tail end and I usually do some sort of chronological or or even if it is just a reading through the Bible when I come to the end of the year I'm typically in and finishing the book of Revelation and there's like so it, though there's a lot of crazy stuff in there amen there's stuff like I don't know what that beast is and all those heads and teeth and wow but don't ever miss the point of what the Lord is saying of his truth, of his kingdom, of his righteousness that is going to be forever and ever. And that from the very beginning, all nations have been a part of it. And he is coming to reign forever and ever in a new heaven and a new earth. The whole thing like he is God. And it's like there's so much excitement at the end of the year for me as I'm reading that and I'm like yes Lord you are worthy to receive glory and power and honor blah 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 the whole, I don't mean to blah blah the Bible but you know what I'm saying I, I had an energy drink and I gotta go but I, it, it is so exciting like praise the Lord to, to, to have that hope for all eternity with him and at the end of the year, I go, I get to do it again. I get to go back in the word of God again. And I get to read anew with fresh eyes for this year what the Lord wants to speak to us 
And P.S., it's all about his kingdom, as was already said. And P.S., it is all about making disciples. And P.S., it is about reaching everyone, reaching the nation. So the quote is from Oswald Chambers, who was a 20th century Scottish minister. He said, there is a ripple effect to the gospel that's inevitable. There's a ripple effect to true grace. It doesn't lead us to only sit and contemplate what happened to us. It leads us to proclaim what's happened to us and what can happen to anybody and everybody on the planet. Amen. So I want to encourage all of us in this new year that we proclaim the ripple effect, that we allow what God has done in us to be through us, to share with people around us that they too can come to know this God who is glorious, who loves us, and who desires to redeem a people from every tongue, tribe, and nation nation to worship him for all eternity. Amen? Amen. All right, so if you're still going to do a greeting, I don't think you are. So maybe turn to somebody and say, this year I'm going to deliberately, I'm going to intentionally tell people about Jesus. Amen? Amen. I see the Amen. clock. I'm leaving. That's because it's the first of the year. Man, we're, we're, we're ready. Are you ready? It's a little bit overwhelming of all the things that we are, uh, we're, we're just got our hands on and working on and getting ready for not just our reunion, our birthday, but for this year. So before I share a couple of thoughts, I want you to stand to your feet and I want you to reach somebody around you, kind of shake off the dust. I try not to. Uh, Try not to go long, and uh, one of the reasons that we've got a piece, Pastor Belinda, right where she's at is because she's working the nursery, too, today. So, greet somebody, and then give you a chance to run to the restroom if you need to. Amen. You may have a seat. Take your Bibles and go to, uh, let's go to Mark chapter 4 is where we'll be today. We'll find our scripture there. To help uh, Craig out a little bit, he did a great job. So I just want to add to it. Today is the first. We have, several years ago, the Lord impressed on me to do a seed faith offering. No obligation. No pressure, only if you want to plant a seed in the in the kingdom of God in addition to your Thanksgiving in return. And uh, we just simply, just for the lake, lack of, uh, of, of any other way of what would that number possibly be, is each Sunday, that particular day, which today is the first, we get consider giving that amount. So I know it doesn't seem like much, but do you have a dollar to plant into the seed today? And, uh, and next week, I believe it's, what, the seventh, so it would be seven, and then so on and so on. And that really frees up and gives us opportunity as a church to work. Part of that seed uh, goes to helping develop the property that is next door. I'll share more about that, as well as developing and putting into this, this uh, uh, property here. And uh, so let's just get right into the word, and uh, let me share this, and I'll share the word that God's given me, and then I'm just going to come on uh, just going to going to talk for a few minutes, okay? Uh, it's an unusual beginning to the year, being that it is New Year's Day, and I know some of you need to go get your black eyed peas and your hominy and and spinach and whatever else, you know. Unless you sang the song in mint, you know, traditionally go out the window and you know and get all that. Lord, we thank you today for your anointing upon this day, not just the day, but the speaker as well as the listeners. Amen. Amen. If you're new to our church, welcome. We try not to get locked into a, a script. We try to just follow the flow and the leading of the Lord. Uh, did he come in with a plan? And we let him have full freedom. He gave me a word that I've been munching on for weeks now. And uh, uh, he works, He works. I, I believe, in the prophetic. And uh, given, given more time, we can talk more about this. And that really could be a result of today's sermon. But one of the things that, for me personally, is is that I work uh, and have identified uh, prophetic markers as God speaks 
it would be something that would come into my life. I would hear it. I would see it. I would experience it. it would, you have to constantly be alert, not just, as the Scripture says, because your enemy is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour, but be alert because I believe the Lord is constantly speaking to us, constantly revealing things to us. We just don't always listen, okay? And, and so when something comes, then, then if it comes again, and then if it comes again, and then if it comes again, and, and you can really test it uh, by saying, well, you say, well, it could be the enemy. It could be the devil. Well, it could be. But if it lines up with the word of God, I promise you it's not the, <laughs> it's not the devil. Because <laughs> he, he don't want you to have anything to do with the word of God, okay? He wants you to have that Bible locked. And hopefully thrown away in all the paper wrapping and stuff that was in the in the house. When you picked it all up, and somebody's looking, where's my Bible? I can't find it. And so, yeah, if it's in the Bible, uh, it's not going to come from the, if it's if it's if it's unselfish. I'm going to put it out there. I don't think it's from the devil, <laughs> okay? Because he's a very selfish individual. He wants you to be very selfish. And uh, there is another culprit. And sometimes we overlook that culprit to blame the devil, and that is yourself. And so, <laughs> made him get an amen. So, so sometimes, I love Pastor Blender. We, we've gone back to this sermon so many times, we're just going to have to have a re-preach it this year. Is, do, I, do I blame God, uh, the devil, or myself? You know, and I've used that so many times when you evaluate. But this word is continually coming into, into, my, into my, my life. And so I couldn't dismiss it, and, and I'm continuing to, to work it and continue to work it. And so I have really have laid it over the next three weeks. So if you want the fullness of what I believe God is wanting to say with this word I'm going to give you today, uh, you need to make a commitment to at least the next three weeks. Then we're having our, our birthday. And I told Pastor Belinda, she said, some of the people in our own church haven't, haven't said yes or no they're coming. And so I said, well, maybe they just think, well, I go to church here, so, you know, I'm just going to be. It helps us in preparation for food and, and activities, and we even have a gift for everybody that comes. And so help us with getting you a gift if you'll just go on there. And if Pastor, I told her to use this as an advertisement, if Pastor can use the QR code and, and do it through technology, then anybody, present and lay out here, let me just give it to you as conversation. You can add the S, and I think that that's probably – most appropriate conversations. And I've uh, had a few interactions with Lisa where that word's come out. I have not ex just expressed the fullness of what God's speaking to me. He took me to this chapter, chapter 4, and realized that this entirety of the story that is being told in this gospel is also revealed in two other gospels, making it revealed in three gospels. Okay, that makes it really important. Right. If he's if you got three that are writing about the same thing, then then you need to elevate your priority of trying to understand it. Right. And I, let me let me just let me just read it. There's no there's no there's no substitute for the word of God. Let's just start in verse one. Again, Jesus began to teach by the lake. The crowd. Just take note of that. I highlighted it. Because he's, it's one of, the, one, of, one of the pieces to this puzzle of the word conversations, the crowd. There's always a crowd when Jesus shows up, okay? They gathered around him, and it was so large that he got into the boat and set it out on the lake. And while all the people were along the shore at the water's edge. Can you all get that vivid picture there? All right. He's out there, he's preaching. He's not a platform, but it is a platform. It's just floating, all right? He taught them many things by parables. Anybody here familiar with a parable? A parable is simply a story. It's an illustration. It reveals the truth about God's kingdom. Interesting. I had no, see, this is how the Spirit of God works, and I think there's a little teaching here that you need to grasp because I have had this said before. It's been a while, but it has, so let me just, I believe the Holy Spirit wants me to say this. Some people say you orchestrate things like when God speaks in the service. Okay? No, that is incorrect. I had no communication with Bob who heard the voice of the Lord and spoke earlier about God's kingdom that I was going to mention it in the sermon. 
This is how God works. Isn't it interesting how he can connect all of them? Songs, words that are manifested in the gifts of the Spirit. I haven't even talked past Stephanie, but I would be curious to know that the subject matter could be and most likely has a thread of the same topic, the kingdom of God. So a story that reveals the truth about God's kingdom to those, listen to this, whose hearts are prepared to hear and conceals the truth from those whose hearts are unprepared. Oh, wow, I could stay there for a few minutes. David gave, said something the other day, and, and I know people tell me, try not to use names. I apologize. I don't ever mean to embarrass anybody. But we're family here, and you shared something that I, I, it just, I just haven't left it because I'm a baseball fan, all right? Even in the winter, I pay attention to baseball. And now he knows exactly what he said. He had no idea, did you? Yeah, that wasn't part of it. And you could tell some people, why did you do that baseball thing? I did that on the missions ball field. Boy, did I look young then. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. But we wanted, to, uh, we wanted to show you that the vision hasn't changed. Some of the ways that we get the vision accomplished uh, has changed because we've determined that some of the ways didn't work. But we're still doing what God's called us to do. But he said, he said, uh, 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 a bullpen pitcher, that is a relief pitcher. For those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, there's a guy who starts the game pitching, and when he starts to falter, for many different reasons, there's one that they call down to the bullpen and say, get ready to come in and pitch. That guy never comes in without first getting up, and what they, baseball terminology, warms up. Am I right, Steve? Thank you. He's my baseball cohort over here, all right? So he warms up, and this is what she said. We come to church today, but like a, like a relief pitcher, we've come prepared. We've already warmed up. That's what the stories, the crowd, okay? The people who are going to understand are those who are in the bullpen that are warmed up, who are ready to receive. Not everybody does that. So the crowd is people who show up like this in an audience. This is good. This is a good thing, all right? All around the world today, some are having to do it hidden because they don't have the freedom we still have in the United States of America. Thank you, Lord, we still have this freedom. Some are hidden underground. But around the world, there are people gathering like this. But in all those gatherings, just like Jesus, is there a better preacher that ever walked the face of the earth than Jesus? No. But even with Jesus, there were people who were prepared to listen and those who were not prepared to listen. Those prepared to listen could get understanding with the words that were being spoken. And those and those that, that did not prepare, they're just like, you know, there's something going on over there. Let's go see what's happening. There are people that do this every Sunday, all the time. There's the crowd. There are things, and, and, and I'm following the leading of the Spirit right now because I just need to expand a little bit on that. There, the crowd is good. The preaching of the Word is part of the commission, needs to take place in these settings. And there are takeaways from the sermons. And over the years, preachers have just tried to do their best. Just tried to do their best. We have Bible schools that help us to, to teach us how to craft sermons and how to, how to give invitations and how to lead people to, to, into the altars, to the cross. All good. Sometimes we get so wrapped up in that, we forget all that Jesus was showing us in his ministry. I'm not saying all preachers are bad. I'm not saying all churches are bad. I'm just saying there comes a time where we have to reflect and look back, and it's a good thing to do on the first of the year, right? 
There's crowds. They're hearing stories. They're hearing preaching. We need to, as we said in the dedication today, those stories create appetites for the things of God. Let me, let me, let me keep going here. The next story he shares was one was very familiar. You've heard this preached. I, even, even people who don't attend church much have heard this one. The, the sower and the seed, the farmer, and uh, the different ground that the seed lands on. Still talking about the crowd, okay? So all of you out here got different soil you walked in here with. What I'm saying today is going to land in your life, and you're going to have a different response. It's just the way that the, the story goes, and it's the truth. But I wanted to pick up right here in verse 10, just for a moment. When he was alone, the 12. So be careful here. Alone, many of you think he's standing over by the tree catching his breath. But the 12, meaning he was alone, but he was with the 12. Because they can't talk to him if they're not next to him. They didn't like look out there and go, Jesus is alone. Jesus, we need you. No. He says, when he was alone, the 12, how do I have such confidence that he was with the 12? Because I read the other two gospels that this story's in, and the other two disciples that were writing the same story were adding more to the story. This is how we can study to show ourselves approved. We begin to bring it all together. And also, I got, man, we live in 2023. Can you believe that? We have so much available to us. I have a book in there where somebody has taken the entire, all four Gospels and laid them up and they paralleled them. So when I open the book, I can read all three of these stories side by side. Well, that's cheating. No, I think that's not cheating. I think somebody helped me out. But you can do that. So when I read all three stories side by side, I begin to understand that he has the crowd, Frank, that he's telling stories. But then he has the 12, a smaller group of people that he's talking to. This is the greatest preacher of all times. Now, they ask him a question. And the question was simply, you know, what are you doing talking about these stories? He even goes way back in. He did something that wouldn't he wouldn't do in the crowd. He didn't do it in the crowd. He went back to Isaiah. <laughs> brought up a passage of Scripture. Why? Because they all had studied that. They were familiar with it. He could do something with them he could not do with the crowd. I'm going to say this one time again and not say it again, Lord willing, the rest of the sermon. It's good to have the crowds and it's good to have those atmospheres. Jesus had those. We still need to gather in these crowds like this. But there is something to be said about this smaller crowd because the depth of what can be talked about in a conversation is greater than that that we can talk here. At this moment, this is how this goes. I, was, I have an illustration. You stay with me on the camera? Hey, boy, he's buzzing around out there. Let me just put one chair right here. Okay, this is just a one arm chair right here. This is how we do this. I would have Lisa come up here, but she said, nope, I'm not going to do it. Jim, come sit right there. I'm picking on you, brother. This is what we're doing here. This is the crowd situation. Turn your chair this way, please. This is the disciple situation. You stay. I'll just move. I don't want you to get wore out on a Sunday. <laughs> this has its benefits. This has opportunities. This has truths. This is necessary. But I'm going to find greater depth, more growth, closer to Jesus, moments, and knowledge when I do this, and this 
is not a 2023 habit of the world we live in. This is a place where you talk and listen, talk and listen. You have a conversation. Let me, let me give you, you can, you can have a seat, unless you want to sit up close. I take it out. He left. All right, let me go over here. I'm going to skip all the way over to verse, verse 34. I'll go, I'll let me just add 33 in. Okay, so he finishes that story, and then he's going to talk about the lamp on the stand, then he goes into the growing seed and the parable of mustard seed. And if you look back, he's, he, he's t he adds a couple of different, the kingdom of God is like, the king. I mean, he, he adds a few things that he's bringing to light here. By the way, that's how you really should study God's word, reading the chapters. Not just pull, man, as I'm reading this, I found like seven different quotes that we use on social media and on bumper stickers and in our lives. And when I'm read, I'm going, Wow, that is not what I take when I see it in those places. People have no idea what the Bible says, okay? So, and the enemy is good with that, by the way. Oh, matter of fact, uh, no, we'll come back to that in a second. No, but here's this verse. And with similar parables, Jesus spoke. I, I've not ever, there's, I mark my Bible on when I preach things and when I do things. I've not ever marked this passage. So that means I've never preached on it. And you all understand why when I read it, because it's not like one of those, when I read it, you're going to go, oh, what great revelation today. Oh, my goodness. I felt goosebumps all the way down to the bottom of the, my toes. Oh, no, no, listen to it. With Je many similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as much as they could understand. But he, he did not say anything to them without using a parable. But when he was alone with his own disciples, he explained everything. Not big, huh? Not one of those, you know, feel good, you know, like nothing is impossible for God. Yes! Call for the elders of the church and you'll be healed. No. This was like when he's alone with his disciples, he explained everything. What? This is what the Lord said. He had conversations with his disciples conversations with his disciples. He would talk, they would listen. They would talk, he would listen. I keep repeating that because when I begin, I begin this, this, this study just, just using technology, trying to discover what is conversation? What does the world think conversation is? What is it? Who is calling me? I want a conversation. Anyway, first year, I know who it is. I'll have to have a little conversation with them later. Is, is that what I've discovered is, is that the social media doesn't help. That's not conversating when you text somebody, okay? It, it's not, okay? If you think that's a substitute, then that's, listen, the devil is a sly old fox. If I could catch him, I'd put him in the box. The dude has caused us to have a culture growing up where parents who did not dedicate nor did they commit to a commission have allowed this to become the ways of communication to even them in the household when they're sitting on the same table of we're going to text versus that we're going to talk. The word, listen, this is why. And, and when you're looking at the, uh, uh, i got to add this. This is all in the same story, all in the same chapter, three different books, okay? Uh, this stands out. Verse 15, of back in the story of the, the seed on the ground, Satan comes and takes away the word. The devil did not leave this up to any of those other fallen angels, to, which I think that he does at times to bring disruption in your life. The devil said, I got to take care of this one. And he come to take away the word, the word spoken. Whoa, what? the word spoken is huge. In the beginning, there was nothingness until what? He spoke. And we discover as we study scriptures that we have the same authority when we speak 
We all know death and life is in the power of the tongue. If the devil can get you to keep your mouth shut, and he desperately doesn't want you to talk to one another, because disciples build other disciples, because that's what makes a disciple. A disciple is a student who then becomes a teacher. He's got to cut the chain. He's got to cut the lifeline. And he does it when he stops the conversations. What happens in the conversations? And then I'm going to have to leave you hanging for another week, I think. Is, is that he explained the stories. I'm not trying to package up and say, oh, we got this big strategy of small groups. No, I, this is to me bigger than that. I just, I'm just trying to create you leaving this place of a crowd and, and finding yourself sitting at a lunch table or, or, you know, some sort of other opportunity throughout the week, whether it be with your family, with your children, your, which is your first line of disciples or your spouse or our friends or your people at workplace, and you have conversations, you're talking to them about what happened and at Sunday, but you're discussing with one another what you heard in the crowd, the story, and listen, if you are a follower of Christ, guess who else is in this little conversation? A three-chord strand cannot be broken. There's a third person who's a part of the circle. And Jesus is there. I mean, I can go on and on about the devil. Where two come together in agreement, when any two people touch one thing. Listen, he doesn't want anybody to speak anything together that's going to even Consider the kingdom of God as part of that conversation. And we don't do that. So though I, there's a lot of things that I, I could keep you, I could keep here for another hour or two. I really could. On things that the Spirit of God is speaking to me of what is going to happen in the coming days if we would just take time to hear and to see what he's talking about, that there is more than just sitting in the crowd hearing a story. And when you begin to have conversations, conversations about the kingdom with one another, listen, if you can't have conversations about the kingdom with people in this room with one another, face, you will not ever have them with other, no, I'm just going to go witness, I'm just going to go talk to other people. You, you, you freaking kidding me? If you, can't, if you can't talk to Frank about the kingdom of God, if he makes, he will make you nervous. Can I speak on you, Frank? Man, he will make you nervous. His heart is full. His, he, he overflows, and when he begins to speak, there, there's genuine tears. I, I, I respect it. I actually get jealous because of the tenderness that this man's had. But you, you gotta want to, you gotta want to talk to wind in my hair. You talk to me later, and I'll tell you why I've named him that. Pastor Michael make you nervous. But that's what the conversations do. It causes you to, to, first of all, comprehend you don't know everything. But the two of you together having a conversation with Jesus in the, in the center of it, you're going to begin to expand the word. It's okay not to know everything. I just don't know what that means in the Scripture. Well, I don't know either. Or maybe, yes, this is what I think it means. This is what I prayed about. we got to have an openness. Listen, I've even been beginning to look at how to have conversations and what those conversations should look like. And, and that's, that's teaching. That's training. Right now, I'm just trying to convince you that in 2023, we should consider having more conversations with one another. Because what the Lord has commissioned us to do is to have conversations with people who have no attendance to the crowds. There are people that need you to go talk with them. I mean, a conversation. Listen, I told Lisa, this is the two killers for conversations. 
No, they're really the same thing. It really, one, one. It's called selfishness, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, at the end of the day, if how many people you talk to, it doesn't matter how long you talk to them, they still, the story always comes back around to them. And you spend the whole time talking about them. That's not a conversation, okay? So I've taken what God showed me in here, and I'm going to leave you with this last verse, which is in the story, chapter 4. I'm going to go back to it. And it has to do with the scriptures. It has to do with the understanding. It has to do with the starting with the story and moving into the depth. He said to them, do you bring in a lamp to put it under a bowl or a bed? Instead, don't you put it on its stand? For whatever is hidden is meant to be disclosed. And whatever is concealed is meant to be brought into the open. If is anyone listening, that's another way to say, is anyone has ears, let him hear. Wow. There is so much hidden. When Pastor Stephanie first threw out, this is a theme for our 20th birthday. And, and now just the Holy Spirit's like, wow, just, just going crazy in my spirit. Just, just talking with me. Because you have to have your first conversation with Jesus. <laughs> Some of you don't even have a conversation with him at all. It's, it's all about you. <laughs> it's just when you talk to him, it, it, it's just all about you. There's no conversation. There's no listening. But he said what's happened is, is that the church has experienced the light and they're hiding it. They're hiding it because they're not talking about it. When you talk about it, you bring life to it. Because with the word, you bring life. And when it comes alive in you, then you continue to talk about it. And you're, it becomes easier to talk to others. So I believe this is what the Lord is doing. The Lord is preparing us to go out, to be more evangelistic, to be more uh, of a, a witness to the world, to let our light shine. Ain't going to get there until you have a little bit more depth because you're just a part of the crowd right now. I'm just going to put us all in the same boat. Can we all be in the same boat? Just part of the crowd. We've just been hearing stories. Some of us have been listening to stories a long time. But it's time now that we turn our chairs toward one another. We start talking about the stories. And in that, we, we say, okay, let's ask Jesus. Jesus, what did this story mean? Because then when you get out there amongst the, 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 the crowd who's not coming in this crowd, you begin to tell them the stories. They become your crowd. You tell them the stories. Some of you don't even know the stories. How many of you can sit here? How many of you can tell me and recite back to me at least three parables in the Bible? Can you tell me three parables in the Bible? That's scary, isn't it? That's what Pastor Stephanie's doing in the back right now. She's teaching those children these stories. She's helping them to grow. She's discipling them that they can then tell the stories. You should be going home, having a conversation with your child saying, what did you hear today? Don't go that word. Don't put the pressure on them to learn. There's, a, there's, a, there's that whole, I learned something, so now there's a test. And so you're testing me, Mom. And let me tell you, the flesh, none of us like to be tested, okay? So don't even do that. Just say, what did you hear today? Would you share that with me? Have a conversation with them. What you're doing is giving them practice and giving yourself practice. Because the world out there really needs you and I to have conversations. Praise God for people like Kirk Cameron and his sister who are having conversations out loud. The, the people on The View, they have conversations. Oh, y'all are familiar with that, aren't you? We got to turn this table, turn our chairs at the table towards each other. So I, I encourage you, start inviting people to your house. Start meeting people elsewhere. Start getting to church early if that's what it takes. Or go home later. 
start talking with one another. You talk, listen, listen, talk, back and forth. I'm going to give you some of these things, Lord willing, in the next couple of weeks. It's, it's vital. Because then when we get to the next layer, this is, this is vision casting right here. Some people still ask me, what's going on next door? It's right up through this wall on this other side, an eatery. It's a place to have conversations. This is the place for the crowd. Oh, See, I don't know if you just felt that. I just felt something. There's a place for the stories to be told. And Jesus doing the preaching through the preacher. And there's a place for the disciples then to ask questions and have conversations. People are going to have conversations. And we're just creating a place for that. When you look, there's a coffee shop opening across the street. Just letting you all know. So people are already like, that's competition. There ain't no competition. Because they're trying to make money. I just, we need to make money to keep the doors open. I got you on that. But that's not our goal. Our purpose, our goal, and I'm going to be very bold here, is create a place for conversations that is not restricted to there, but it can begin there. And conversations that disciple and make disciples who then reproduce other disciples. I actually, as I walked the perimeter of the property, I didn't go out in the woods today. Okay, I'll just let you know. But I walked around the house and the church. And just, I actually had this thought, and I have plans that we can build a bigger sanctuary, but really we don't need, there are enough big churches around. And all that's going to continue to do, and, and I like crowds, by the way. I'm a very social people person. I feed off of crowds. It's just who I am. But what God needs right now is he needs churches to begin and to grow. I'm going to say begin because I, they're not growing because look at all the empty chairs. Look at churches. He doesn't need just big crowds showing up. He needs relationships to start with conversations, conversations that are about the word of God. Tearing it open, dissecting it. That's what you do. Those people out there that you're going to have these conversations with, they don't care what your house looks like. They don't care what you did yesterday. They don't care what you got for Christmas. They don't care what your plans are for the future. See, those are all superficial things that happen in our world. That, and we think that that's conversating when we begin to tell people about our lives. No, conversation is when we begin to open up God's word and we begin to break it open one piece at a time. We break bread with them. Oh, we should have communion right now. We break bread with them. And, and, and we get to the blood of Jesus, and we talk to them about this. But it's got to start somewhere. It's got to start, first of all, you make a conscious decision. I'm going to have conversations with people. You got to. You got to. So we've always been about reaching and equipping people for successful, spirit-filled Christian living. To get there. We need to have some conversations. And I can't have all those conversations in this room at this moment with the crowd. I am available for conversations. Now, if in those conversations you want to start turning that for something other than for the good of the kingdom, I'm probably going to say, when you're ready for a conversation, I'll come back. Can I be that bold? I don't need to hear you whine and complain about things that you see other tri Christians do in the church and, and what your opinion is. I don't need your opinion. I got two of my own. I don't have a split personality. I just wanted to have two. But if you want to have a conversation about the things of God, I don't want to hear your political views and opinions. I want to hear 
I want to I want to conversate with you about what we can do for the kingdom of God in 2023. I want to conversate with you about what your part can be in in reaching people for Jesus and making disciples. I want to conversate with you of how God has put a gift in you and you are the one to stir it up so that it can be used to bring life into the body of Christ that we can reach a world that is lost. We should have at the end of this next year, if the Lord doesn't come back, we should have at least 2,023 souls that have been won to the Lord. Oh, no, Pastor, we don't say that. We say that we've talked to about the Lord. That's a big number. We shouldn't. That's, that's the problem. That's the problem. We set goals out there that are reachable by man. We can just say, Jesus loves you 2,023 times. Why not pick that number? It's 2,023. I don't know if y'all saw that. Hadn't wrote your first check yet, so you don't know. We should win 2,023 in 2,023. That can happen, but not without conversations. We got to have them. Quit being just the crowd. Be a disciple. Start asking questions. Start getting in conversations with one another that includes Jesus that we can then conversate with others. Bow your heads. Lord, I thank you that we've had this privilege and this opportunity. Lord God, there's so much. Lord, we can't do it all in one setting. So, Lord God, I've given myself to the availability to have conversations outside this room. I pray that my schedule is overwhelmed with people who want to sit down and talk. And Lord God, so that I can encourage them to go out and talk. So we can talk to those who need to hear this precious gospel and that you love them. And then I pray that, Lord, they begin to win people to the Lord, that we are not just settling, that we talk to somebody about Jesus, but that they're talking to somebody about Jesus. We give you the glory in your name. Amen. I plan to see you next week. I just decided this morning to do this. We got three weeks before the party. There are a lot of things to still do on this property to welcome. Right now, we have over 100 that have RSVP. There's still people I see on the list that I know they're coming. They just had an RSVP. I've just created a, I'm going to be here every Tuesday. Um, oh, I'm going to pick a day. I'll have to send that out. But if you're interested, text me because I just remember I had something on Tuesday morning. But I got to be here. I got to get here. We got to get on the property. People have asked, what can I do? How can I do it? I'm going to, I got a list. I don't have to be here. I'm not a micromanager. I'm not going to watch over you. If you want to work at 2 o'clock in the morning, that's fine with me. If you want to work at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, that's fine with me. I will hand you something on the list. We, together, we can prepare this property for all the people that are coming and for the community to see what's happening here. We got work to do. Now, the other option is I go hire some people to get the job done. So if you want to drop a check in the bank today, we can then say, hey, go go here. I can do that too. But I think it's more fun when we get together and do it because then me and Brenda, we've already decided we're going to do it, and we're going to have some conversations in between some sort of manual labor. All right, praise God. Sandy feet, you're the salt of the earth. You're the light of the world. Glorify God by having conversations about Him. Amen.